birthing structures are built using piles this structure what is shown in this slide being constructed as five rows of piles first row second row third row fourth row and fifth rows of piles and the piles are used for building the deck also you can see a pedestal on top of the pile which is already built there is another pedestal here what you are showing is a pile cap on top of this you have the pedestal and then we have the cranes we have the rails being laid here and we have a overhead crane the overhead crane moves on this rail and this is used to lift this precast beams and place on top of it so the design and construction should take care of this uh, fact that we use the pile for uh, temporarily supporting the gantry before going into the different types of berthing structures we should know what are the different types of cargo it handles this is the indian scenario pol petrol oil and lubricant is about 32% container 20% coal 17% ore 32% the other cargoes like wood the fertilizer wheat they are constitute about 20% so maximum cargo 32% is pol then container coal and ore constitute another component for which you have to design so we'll be discussing about uh, the vessel size that will be used for coal and iron ore for pol multi purpose berth this constitute the other berths as well as containers this for a structure which uh, we are designing for kopalpur port limited based on the number of vessels and the efficiency and the optimization of cost the vessel size will be determined it is preferable to go for coal and iron ore 120000 dwt vessel will be designing for this whereas we may use from 80000 to 120000 dwt vessel so design is important there is a design vessel size if you are designing for 120000 you can use smaller size vessels also these dimensions are important about 260 meter long 40 meter wide and 16.5 meter draft the draft controls the design whereas the length determines what should be the length of the berthing structure pol berth there are uh, two categories for pol berth one is for the product that is uh, from a refinery if you are exporting the product then we go in for 80000 dwt vessel whereas the crude oil that is coming for uh, refinery will be much bigger size maybe 250000 dwt vessel we may use a single boy mooring system in a open sea so that i am not discussing we can have a vlcc very large crude carrier that can be on a berth also that also i am not discussing only for product export we have 80000 dwt length is 243 meters width is 34 meters and draft is 13.5 meter draft i said about the length and the depth draft the width is mainly required the width of the berth is the controlling factor for the cranes and other things cranes for handling the cargo <coughs> the 80000 dwt vessel length is 245 meter 32 meter is the width and 14 meter is the draft and uh, if you see this uh, dimensions it is not uh, constant suppose you have 80000 dwt you may have a uh, longer length uh, and uh, longer width and a lesser draft so it's not that if 80000 means it will have only this size depending on the size of vessel playing in the region they will decide what size of the length to be considered for the design purpose so uh, what is the definition of the berth is given here a ship station a ship station at anchor or at wharf or alongside a structure the berth occupancy i have discussed earlier that is about 0.55 to 0.65 is recommended this is expressed as a ratio of the actual time of occupation of the berth by ships to the total period of specified that is what is the total period if you say about 365 days you may not have 365 days maybe 300 days out of which how many days the ships are there that means 150 days the ships will be there in the berth 
that is called as the birth occupancy. So, the formal definition is the duration over which a ship lies anchored at the berth for loading and unloading operations in a specified period of time. Typically, it is uh, about uh, one day or one and a half day. Some places, some smaller vessels can be unloaded or loaded even in six hours. There are different types of berth, we can call it as a key, wharf, pier, or jetty. I will explain this. There is uh, the definitions uh, differ from textbook to textbook, but anyhow, I will give the definition which I will be following in the class. We can also classify the berth as a passenger berth, general cargo berth, bulk cargo berth, container, liquid cargo berth. Bulk cargo berth is this uh, uh, ore and coal, general cargo is uh, wood fertilizer, finished steel products. Liquid cargo is that POL berth. We can also classify the berth as vertical phase type or open type. This is mostly hydrodynamic, uh, hydrodynamically open types are better because this absorbs the wave energy compared to vertical phase type. Then we have a structural behavior whether it is a gravity type structure or a flexible type structure. These are the classification that is based on the configuration based on the type of cargo to be handled, based on the phase of the structure, hydrodynamically open types are better, vertical phase type reflects the waves, based on the load transfer is a gravity or a flexible type. It is preferable to understand all these types before going into the design. The quay is a stretch of paved bank or a solid artificial lightning place parallel to the navigation waterway for loading and unloading of vessels. So, we have a navigation waterway means parallel to the entrance channel, parallel to the breakwater, we have a solid structure that is a caisson, then you can call it as a key. Wharf is same definition alongside the breakwater but this is built on piles and this is parallel to the shore of a harbor, river or a canal, then we call it as a wharf. Key and wharf are parallel to the breakwater or coastline, whereas pier and jetty they are perpendicular to the coastline. Pier is a open type construction, this extends into the water from the shore this serves as a landing place, recreational facility rather than to afford coastal protection. Uh, people construct pier for coastal protection also, a structure similar to pier for coastal protection, but that is not called as a pier. Jetty is in open sea coast, a structure projecting into water, but it need not have to be in open sea coast, it can be inside the harbor basin also. It is not a continuous structure. It consists of jetty head, birthing dolphin, mooring dolphins. I will show the sketch. Basically, pier or jetty are perpendicular to the shoreline or breakwater. So, the types of birthing structure are given in this textbook, Gaithwaite 1990. He has given the arrangements based on alongside open dolphin type or ferry type. This is the other uh, classification. The classification for vertical phase and open type is given by Agarshu et al. So, you can go through these two books, this gives uh, most of the chapter what we will be covering in this course. The vertical phase structure we have sheet pile wall, block wall, caissons, open type structures are piled construction. So, I will explain all these things with figure. The gravity structure and flexible structure. Gravity structure is masonry wall, concrete block walls or concrete caisson. Flexible structures are steel sheet pile wall, diaphragm wall, jetties. So, this type of classification, the gravity structures and the steel sheet pile and diaphragm wall together can be classified as a vertical phase type. So, you have to have a matrix to find out where it fits in. So, whatever classification we have given, 
it will differ the steel sheet pale and diaphragm all along with these structures will constitute a vertical phase type. This is the definition given by along uh, by Gaithwaite is alongside type structure with a ship moored by this mooring lines this is a open dolphin type we have a trestle to the shore we have a loading platform we have two breasting dolphins two mooring dolphins. So, we have alongside type and open dolphin type the difference is this is a continuous structure this is isolated structures here the crane will move on top of the structure to load and unload cargo from different places whereas here the POL cargo will float to the center we will have a marine loading arm here from where the cargo will be transferred. We have structure connecting this these are called as catwalks just for a person to move from one place to another place. Then we have the ferry type structure where the ship is like this the berth configuration is like this we have a transfer bridge and we have some guide structures dolphins the car and other things can be exported through this this is the ferry type. You please uh, draw the figure of all these three types. So, you should be able to explain what are the three different types of berthing structures. Each structure depending on the type will, uh, will constitute different type of loading. This is a gravity type structure where below the seabed we create a filter medium. So, that the caisson will get supported here and we provide some scouring mechanism also on this side and water level will be like this the gravity type is also a vertical phase type this can also be called as a key this is a sheet pile wall anchored back this is called as a dead man wall it is also a vertical phase type but this is a flexible type flexible means whenever there is a earth pressure acting on this the structure will deflect and depending on the level of deflection the active earth pressure will be formed there will be bending movement and shear force this is also a vertical phase type this uh, distance will be slightly more than what is shown in the figure. Then we have the open type structure open type means water will move below the deck there may be a protection like this this will dissipate the energy as the wave is moving here as the water depth is limited the waves will break and it will dissipate here. So, that way it is better this can be called as, as a wharf this can also be called as a open type structure this can be used for alongside type also this is the most commonly used structure in India. So, you have to draw depending on configuration three types depending on the load transfer three types this shows uh, the text from Agarshu book here we have classified all the structure as uh, vertical phase this structure as open type. So, this particular structure is made of block wall for lesser water depth then we have the caisson this is for uh, larger water depth then we have cellular bulkhead this also can be used from shallow to deep waters and this is a steel sheet pile wall supported by piles and an anchor wall here it is a steel sheet pile wall connected by anchor rod to raker piles and here we have a deck structure here much below the ground level and we fill this with uh, soil so that the vertical load is more this is called as a relieving platform the difference here is the deck is at the top level here the deck is at a slightly lower level this is also a similar structure. Then we have the open pile structure here we have an anchor rod for this retaining beam here we do not have a anchor rod for the retaining beam. 
and here we have Raker piles also vertical and Raker piles. Raker pile means it is inclined. Typically, the Raker piles are uh, one horizontal to three vertical to one horizontal to six vertical. That is the slope normally they drive the Raker piles. Otherwise, the construction will be difficult. So. We will be discussing different case studies. The first one will be for a structure here. The structure consists of a front diaphragm wall with a number of uh, vertical piles with a top cross beam, and this is a coping beam connecting the diaphragm wall. Diaphragm wall is a continuous structure, these piles are different diameters 1 meter, 1.3 meter. 1.3 meter. These piles are spaced at 4 meters center to center. When you want to do the analysis and design, you have to draw a wedge line. In this portion, the soil will be moving towards the diaphragm wall when the diaphragm wall is deflecting. So, for this reason, the soil will not offer support to these piles. So, if you are putting springs for the analysis, you have to place the springs below this active edge line. So, you do not get soil support above this for the pile. The structure width is about 25 meters and we have the bollard here, the fender will be fixed here. There is a opening provided, this is for services and utilities and here we have the dredge level. Here the deck is very thick about 3.65 meter, that is about the height of this room, it is a very old design built in 1980s, we have lot of cross beams also, but nowadays uh, we go for a much slender deck system. Here different levels are marked, the structure is built in Bharati port, top level is about plus 5 meters, high water level is plus 3.25, then ridge level is minus 12.5, the founding level is minus 23 meters. So, minus 23 to plus 5 that is 28 meters that is equal to about 10 story building approximately. So, the length of the berth is 250 meters, width is 25.3 and the vessel size is 30,000 dWt and we provide expansion gap at every 50 meters. Suppose, we have the berth length is 250 meters we do not build for 250 meters, every 50 meters you provide a gap. This next structure what we are uh, see, one of the problem for this type of structures is, once you have the diaphragm wall in the front, it has to take the full earth pressure. So, what we have now decided is, instead of keeping the diaphragm wall in the front, we will keep the diaphragm wall on the back and it will become some kind of a open type structure. So, you see the drawing here. So, we have the piles in the front and you have the diaphragm wall on the back. The earlier case diaphragm wall is in the front. This is designed for a deeper draft. So, we have dredge level of minus 15. And then we can assume a slope, the soil will slide like this, the slope of the soil is 1 vertical to 3 horizontal. So, in this type of slope when you provide, when you have a width of about 30 meters, the level here will become minus 5. That means, the earth pressure acting on the structure will be instead of the top level to the dredge level, it will be the top level to the slope cut level. So, here it is for a top level is plus 5.8, 5.8 to 15 that is 20.8 meter it has to take the earth pressure, whereas here it will be 5 plus 5.8, 10.8 meter. The force acting is less, when the force acting is less, the number of piles can be reduced. Here we have more number of piles in the cross section, whereas the, in the longitudinal direction we have only at every 7.5 meter, earlier it was every 4, 4 meters, now it will be every 7.5 meter. So, when you have this type of structure, when the ship comes and hits, 
the birthing force will be transmitted immediately behind the soil behind the diaphragm wall immediately to the soil behind the diaphragm wall we only for transferring the mooring pull we need this uh, forces transmitted to the diaphragm wall and the piles if you provide one more alternative suppose you provide a tie rod and a cut off wall this thickness of the diaphragm wall can be reduced or you can provide a beam and eliminate this also so such a system we will give in next slide so this berth consists of vertical piles with the rear main diaphragm wall is used in jawaharlal nehru portress diameter of the pile is 1200 mm and the thickness is 850 mm if you provide a front diaphragm wall the thickness will be about 1300 mm that's why it is reducing i said the spacing in the launch hole is 7.5 i think it is 6.4 meters center to center and uh, for different rows of piles the distances are given here 2.7 meter is the distance from the pile row a to the outer face then we have 7 meter between a and b b and c 6 meter c and d i'm sorry a and b and b and c is 7 meter between c and d is 6 meter between d and e is 4.5 meter so from this point center line to the center line this outer face is about 3.5 meter here the spacing is 7 meter here it is 6 meter here it is 4.5 and 4.5 that is what is written in the text there this shows the plan of the berth the each berth is having a length of 60 meter and here we are providing a expansion gap why do we provide expansion gap why do we have to provide expansion gap hmm what is it Uh, when, once you have a temperature variation between summer and winter, summer may be about 40-42 degrees, winter may be around 20 or 15 degrees. That much temperature difference, maybe 15 to 20 degrees. There is coefficient of thermal expansion is there, right? If the structures are too close, without expansion gap, when it is expanding, it will transfer some force. and sometimes it may crack the structure also that is why we provide a expansion gap similarly when there is a earthquake that is taking place what happens to the structure structure also oscillates when it is oscillating when there is no sufficient gap one structure will hit the other structure the third is when the soil profile varies over a length of 250 meters soil profile may vary the first block of 60 meter may have rock at minus 15 meter level the second block may have rock at 25 meter level third block may have at 20 meter level so the foundation depth may vary the foundation depth varies your deflection varies due to horizontal load that also you should take care is it clear three reasons one your friend has told that is due to temperature temperature there can be expansion or there can be a shrinkage also the second is due to seismic force any lateral force it can be due to wind force on the crane wind force on the structure it can be due to birthing force it can be due to mooring force birthing force and mooring force may have a component along the direction of the berth need not have to be perpendicular to the berth once you have a force there a perpendicular parallel to the berth then there will be deflection that also you have to see the another thing is deflection due to earthquake can be in phase that means if you have two structures side by side this can move together in tandem or sometimes when this is moving this side other structure may move opposite side that also you should take care third is the foundation the foundation need not have to be the same at all the places for that also you have to take care so here this is the plan of the structure this is the c side and we have provided two beams one is the beam on the c side another is the beam on the land side this is the center to center of the crane beams these are the piles 
this is the rear diaphragm wall and from this point to here is about 3.3 meters. Here we provide bollards as well as fenders, so we need a fender beam here and these are the cross beams which are connecting and the slab is positioned on top of the structure. So, the third case study is uh, the vertical piles with cut off wall and rear dead man diaphragm wall. So, what we are trying to do here is instead of providing uh, like this a diaphragm wall and having a natural slope of soil 1 in 3, we provide a rock to embankment. So, that the bed level instead of minus 5 it becomes 1. So, we provide an embankment here like this and provide a cut off wall with a tie rod and a dead man system. So, we will see the figure this is very recently built <coughs> this is built in 2000, 2000 uh, maybe 2006 or 2007. The earlier structure Jawaharlal Nehru Portress is built in 1995 or so, the other one was built in 1980. So, three decades how we are improving we are telling. Here the dredge level is minus 15.5 is built in Chennai port, here we have a top level is 4.8. We have a natural soil here 1 in 3 slope, what we are doing is this is the natural actually this structure we are filling on this side also we see the structure here this is a second container terminal we are building filling it on the this is the breakwater we are filling soil here also that is why in this structure if you see we have a sand fill here then we have a filter layer then we are also filling it with various types of stones and make this slope 1 vertical to 1.8 horizontal. This is 1 vertical to 1.8 horizontal, so that the slope line cuts very close to the deck where we provide a cut off wall, then we provide a tie, tie back and a dead man wall system. So, we are avoiding the diaphragm wall, when you avoid the diaphragm wall it is a continuous structure, so we save lot of money. These are all vertical piles and a deck system and we provide beams here in the front as well as here. So, we have only this much as the width of the container crane that is about 30 meter. We have provided the cross beams here and the slab is supported between the cross beam. So, this structure is much more economical compared to any other structure. These tie rods what you are placing the location is important, location is at least 3 meter, this can be placed above or below also depending on the location the force will change. And these uh, tie rods are placed at every 3.75 meter center to center, here the spacing of the piles in the longitudinal direction is about 7.5 meters. So, we in between cross beams we have one more tie back system, any doubt in this? I am discussing about three systems, the first system we have the front diaphragm wall, the second system we have the rear diaphragm wall, the third system we do not have any diaphragm wall. First system the front diaphragm wall takes all the earth pressure, the second system the natural slope of the soil 1 in 3 is used to reduce the force on the rear diaphragm wall, the third system the rear diaphragm wall is completely eliminated by providing a rock fill embankment with a slope of 1 vertical to 1.8. So, if it is a soil 1 in 3 only will be stable, if you put rock 1 in 1.8 will be stable, if it is a very soft clay 1 in 5 will be the stable slope. This angle of repose it is related to if you dump the soil there will be a slope which will be formed naturally that is the soil what we are taking as the natural slope. If it is a very big fold boulders 
even we may have 1 is to 1.5 slope size of the stone. Before designing any birthing structure we have to explore various alternatives. I have given three alternatives maybe I may sound that this is the best alternative, but depending on some of the site situation this may not be the best alternative. Sometime I may use front diaphragm wall itself as a good alternative ok. Do not go by what uh, this is for a particular situation if you have marine soft clay and all maybe we may go in for a front diaphragm wall. In Vaisakhapatnam port, port depends on the situation. So, this second kind of terminal is in Chennai port, this is proposed to handle 1 million TEU. What is TEU? 24 equivalent units. The biggest port in the world handles 45 million TEU. Biggest port in India is JNPT which handles 4 million TEU. Chennai port handles 2 million TEU. The biggest port is container port is in China, Shanghai. The next biggest is in Singapore. So, we are so much behind. This berth is about 820 meter long somewhere here. So, I may arrange a site visit to Chennai port sometime. Who is your class representative here? M Tech OE1. Who is class representative? Yeah, ocean engineering. No class representative. Who is that man? <laughs> he is absent for a very long time. Okay. The 820 meter long berth is divided into 13 modules, each module is about 60 meter with an expansion gap of 40 millimeters. The width of the berth is about 37 meter. The berth is placed on poor to cast into piles. So, when you talk about piles, we have different types of piles. We have bored cast in situ pile, we have driven cast in situ pile, we have precast piles. I will not get into details of all these variations, but you please be aware that there are different types of piles. The spacing of the pile is about 7.5 meter in the longitudinal direction, it is about 7.62 meter in the transverse direction. There are two crane beams one is at the sea side and another is at the land side. There is a cut off wall which is of weight width 800 millimeters, depth is 2.5 meters. This provided at a distance of 2.75 meter from the land side crane beam. This is required to transfer the birthing force to the backfill. There are two types of lateral force, one is a birthing force, another is a mooring force. Birthing force will be transferred directly to the backfill by the cutoff wall. That means all your piles will not be subjected to any force from the birthing. Is it clear to you? If you want to economize the structure, you can do it by various means. You can go in for a sophisticated software and do a rigorous analysis. Then you can design a structure also with uh, very good software, spreadsheets. But apart from these two alternatives, the best way is to reduce the forces coming onto your structural system. When there is a birthing force, if we can transfer it immediately to the backfill behind the cutoff wall, none of the force will go into the pile. And when you have a mooring pull, we have provided the dead man wall of size the same thing only is about 3 meter depth this is at a dead distance of 14.5 meter from the cutoff wall to transfer the mooring pool. I will show this here this is your dead man wall this is your cutoff wall when you apply the birthing force 
immediately play behind the cutoff wall the force will be transferred to the back fill. If you pull it through the bullet from the cutoff wall it will go to the dead man wall through the tie back system. Dead man wall also transfers the load by passive pressure. So, what you are doing is you are transferring the both the birthing force as well as the mooring force to the back fill. That means, you are reducing the forces on the piles only due to dead load, crane load, live load you have to design the pile it is only vertical force. So, the cutoff wall size is 800 millimeter by 2.5 meter, the dead man wall is size, size 800 millimeter by 3 meter. It is a very small depth and width also very small, this will economize the structure. This tie rod spacing is 3.75 meters center to center. This uh, anchor consists of a 120 millimeter diameter tie rods, and the spacing of the tie rod is at about uh, I think this is wrong. This uh, spacing is 3.75. The top of the dead man wall is 0.5 meter below the key level. This uh, we do not take the dead man wall right up to the top, we are keeping it about 0.5 meter below the ground surface. So, when you have the passive pressure distribution you can have some effect wedge effect like this you do not have to keep it at the top. Typically the dead man wall center line should coincide with the tie rod location this is another thing that we have to see. Now, I am going to do show one structure which has failed very recently, failed means about 45 crores have gone nothing can be done. This has happened in Vaisak port, they have a front sheet pile wall, we have a tie back system, we have a dead man wall. So, in this design they made mistakes normally when you design a structure if you make one mistake most likely it will not fail if you make multiple mistakes it is likely to fail. This is in Vaisak port where, where we have a marine soft clay they used a steel sheet pile wall they have not taken it into the rock because steel sheet pile wall cannot be taken into the rock that is the first mistake they have done. Then we have an active edge here there is a passive edge from the dead man wall these two should not meet these two should not meet the anchor rod should be placed for a very long length. So, the location of the dead man wall is not correct the second reason I think they have kept at a distance of about 20 meters they should have placed the distance as 40 meter. They have not taken the soil parameters correctly. One of the class we discussed about active earth pressure and passive earth pressure. If you want to calculate the active earth pressure, it is Ka gamma H minus 2 C. C value they have taken very high. That means the active earth pressure is less. There is a surcharge behind the dead man wall. They have not taken the surcharge in the dead man wall in the design purpose they have not taken the differential water pressure properly. So, there are about 5 reasons it has failed <laughs> one is the steel sheet pile wall when you provide since the soil this embedment depth is called as the embedment depth this has to be designed properly. Below the dredge level we have very good soil for about 4 meters below 4 meters we have rock suppose they had soil for about 10 meters and this depth is about 20 meters they have driven the sheet pile wall to another 10 meters they would have done it. They have only 4 meter sand below that they have rock. So, they did not want to do it in the rock that is why they stopped this 4 meter below this inadequate embedment depth this has to be calculated. Then location of the 
dead man wall you have an active wedge this soil is sliding along with the sheet pile wall there is no soil in front of this to take the passive earth pressure if you want to do you have to shift it further then when the active force is to be calculated you have to use gamma h minus 2 c the c value they assumed high that means the earth pressure is less then there is a some earth pressure behind the backfill that they have not assumed properly then there is a differential water pressure that also they have not assumed properly what they have done is they have driven the sheet pile wall they have put the anchor with the dead man wall the soil level was at plus 5 on both the side they start excavating this side as they start excavating the sheet pile wall was deflecting and as it was deflecting more and more there is a connection between the anchor wall and this this has given way the soil has settled the how the sheet pile wall is separately bending here like this the anchor is not connected the whole soil has got settled down this what is happening <coughs> nearby we are designing another structure where we are using a sheet pile wall with some rows of vertical piles connected to a by a beam and all the piles are taken into the rock and sheet pile wall instead of using we are using a diaphragm wall concrete diaphragm wall we remove the rock particles here for about 2 meters so 4 meter of sand and 2 meter of rock diaphragm wall is going and we have more number of piles piles even if you have an active wedge you can put springs below that and then rock it is there it will take the load here this uh, dead man wall sufficient depth also it was not driven the soil is a marine soft clay up to the dredge level so there is no sufficient resistance offered now, if they have taken this dead man wall sufficiently into the sand then also it would not have failed this is a soft clay with lot of silt draining into the sea when they are driving the sheet pile wall because of its own weight it gets into the it goes down you do not have to hammer it just because of the weight it has gone the such type of soil you should not use the steel sheet pile wall there should be some resistance another mistake is they designed based on a soil investigation not in the final alignment of the berth the soil investigation used is at a different location not at this location they change the alignment they first did the soil investigation then they change the alignment when you change the alignment you should go in for new soil investigation the new alignment is about 50 meter away from the old alignment this choice of sheet pile wall for the main wall in this location is totally unwarranted considering the highly fluid nature of the clay so after we have done this failure we did the soil investigation we have got lesser cohesion compared to the design cohesion assumed based on one borehole investigation normally if the birth is 250 meters we have to take five boreholes the whole alignment they have taken only one borehole we have to take five boreholes the dead man sheet pile wall was not located beyond the passive rupture surface and was terminated in the soft clay zone which was highly undesirable location is wrong termination is also wrong the ground water level concerned in the design of dead man wall is the same as the main wall whereas uh, this is 9527 recommends higher water table for dead man wall the rear side we have a dead man wall for that is code stipulates higher water level that they have not done the post failure investigation has indicated 1 meter higher water table the weep holes also have not been provided in the main wall suppose you want to reduce the differential water pressure you have to provide holes in the main wall so that the water will seep through that they have not done the load combination of surcharge load behind the dead man wall and no surcharge in front of the dead man wall has also not been considered in the design so this i told you but i will explain here they will stack the cargo here 
but there will be one combination where they will stock only behind here there may not be any cargo here there may be some crane going that condition has to be considered it is given in the code is 9527 that they have not considered the end result is they have not followed the code which has given all the specifications to be considered in the design if you are not following that then the failure will take place okay